feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign Welcome back to FAQ The Madness Are people, entities, governments, businesses, those kind of things Are they inherently corrupt or do they become corrupt? Let's jump into another rep Recording. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the show. My name is Craig, and this is Facts with Fact of Madness. And I see that uh, Mr. Cliff Williams is in the house. Thank you for being here. I'm reminded that life is so fleeting. You know, I wake up around 6, 6.30, 6 I'll kind of take a look at the market, if you will, just kind of starting to kind of be interested in doing that kind of thing. And uh, and then I go play golf. One reason why I like the game is because you are playing against yourself and God, right? Uh, um, so I'm only, I am accountable to my score and how well I'm doing by how hard I am on myself. You know, I am forgiving on some level. I will take a drop here and there, but for the most part, I want to improve and I have a mission and that is to beat the people who have seen me play the worst the next time I play them. So prior to that today, uh, I woke up and I saw that AWB or Auditing White Black, Wild Black, um, James had been live. So I missed the actual live. I hadn't thought about it, but I hadn't heard from him for, you know, quite a long time. So for those of you who know him, I would say that he's one of the first people that kind of ever, you know, had a larger, much larger platform than I had, but kind of was interested in something that I did and then had me on his show. He put me on his show. He and I talked about um, what I was doing, why I had gotten into you know, the, the community, why it touched me. You guys have heard the story. If you haven't, then, you know, go back to one of my, some of my earlier videos. It's basically because of my mother. She has dementia. She had business to do with the social security administration. I wanted to make sure that, that I was as thorough as I possibly could. And so I wanted to record. So, um, and AWB is in Florida. Well, currently he's in, he's overseas. I think he's in Thailand. He brought me on his show. We, uh, he played, two of my videos, if I remember, and we talked about it. And then since then, you know, we got in contact with each other. We've been in contact periodically back and forth. Uh, and he'll give me little pointers here and there. We're not going to play all of it, but the very beginnings of this um, kind of outline what it is that I wanted to talk about and why it, it comes to my attention. So, hey, what's up, everyone? Um, I don't know if my Mike is working. I'm going to try to fix it now. While I'm making this video, I want to say what's up to everyone. I know it's been a while since I made a video. Um, I'm recovering from a vehicle accident. Um, I, I was actually in the hospital for over, I was in a coma for over a month. <clears throat> uh, and I finally woke up from that coma and I stayed in the hospital and I want to say uh, like another month. What's up, Lou? So right now I'm in the, I'm in the healing process and, uh, they just told me a few things about my 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 channel um apparently um i'm facing some uh they stopped the monetization of my channel so if you're able to grab me a coffee or send me a coffee uh it'd be appreciated But apparently I can I can still go live and I can still post. So you'll be you'll y'all will definitely see uh content coming from me. If you didn't catch that, um he was and he's gonna go into it. I'll let it play for a little bit as well. Um, but he was in an accident and 
he was in a coma for a month or so uh, and in the hospital for a month thereafter. So it's been about two months and it sounds about right. You know, maybe about two months or so his channel has been demonetized. Now I haven't been able to reach out to him. Well, other than my comment on this particular video, uh, I hadn't been able to reach out to him, but I'm going to, um, you know, see if there's anything I can do on the backside to do that. So um, whenever I do what I do to get this video up, um, I will likely put the information that will allow you to buy him a coffee, like he said. For those of you who don't know that much about um, James, his name is James. He goes, but he goes, his, you know, people call him Auto and Wild Black, AWB. He was in Florida for a period of time. And the way I remember it is he was doing auditing videos and he was always respectful, always not doing anything to basically be a menace to society. I, I would say if there are any of those people that you would say are respectful in his efforts, he was one of them. But then he went and he kind of talked about how he was going to train in Thailand. And so he traveled and he's been there for a while. And I think he went somewhere else as well, but he's been traveling around and then kind of doing videos in the backside. And he apparently had accumulated a lot of content. So apparently he mentions in this video as well that uh, he started a business there. But all of those things happen. Not only should you check out the entirety of this video, but uh, the work that he's done in general, I would say check out as well. Um, but clearly he's fallen on hard times. And as uh, Cliff indicates, his videos are educational. You know, there, there are certain people out there, you know, like um, Ocean, for example, their approach to what they are doing is not so in your face-esque. Um, and so the message is coming across that, hey, all I really want to do is just exercise my ability to do something in public. And if you have a problem with it, I want to know why it is that you have a problem with it. And we can talk about it. But if you don't want to talk about it, or if you're going to be a, a donkey about it, then I'm going to let other people see that's how you decide that you're going to treat the public. And if you're treating me like this and I have a camera in front of you, imagine how you likely are to be when there is not a camera. So think about that. I mean, we, those people who do this um, in the community and, and are willing to hold a camera up to someone who is a public servant. And, and I, I don't necessarily have an, a problem with calling an individual a public servant. I recognize that that's what they are doing. And sometimes they may take that in the wrong way. I'm just simply saying that your job is to serve the public. Just like if you worked at McDonald's, you would be serving the customer. Right. And so anything that you do likely is to be able to accomplish making sure that you give the best service possible. James has always been one of those individuals who has done the craft of, you know, exposing people who aren't serving the public professionally, nicely, all those kind of things uh, and kind of highlights it in his videos. And now he's falling on a hard time. So I think if we have the ability to do so, then we can help him. And and do a morning. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So with that extent, I thought I was, you know, I didn't know I would still be here. Thank you, Lou. Yeah, if anybody can. Uh send me a coffee i think that's that's the so if you go to my channel i'm gonna post a link up here you go to my channel so right now i can't there they have a youtube has a thing where i can't uh have any more members right now or uh tap into any monetization so so interesting so now i think when i when i first met uh, or came in contact with uh, auditing while black um i want to say that he uh, he might have been right around 
5,000 people, maybe. Let's see, where is he now? So he has 15. So he was definitely he was definitely lower than that. I, I want to say it was right around five, maybe 8,000. And he described to me how um, he kind of got, uh, uh, what was it called? San Juan Key, San Juan Key. He kind of took him under his wing or gave him a shout out, whatever. And he said his channel kind of blew up. But then he just started doing content, content, more and more content. And he went to 8,000, he went overseas, and now he's at 15,000. But, uh, you know, he, he's been on a journey where he just kicks out a lot of content. And uh, even, even <laughs> what I'm reminded of is that although he is in uh, Thailand, I'm reminded that I would like to see him back in America doing those kind of things. So it's kind of good to, and he talks about probably coming back after this has happened. All right. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure y'all can see that. That's me in the hospital bed. Uh, so this is a, a real deal uh, situation. Um, so if you can, if you, if you look, you can see that tube or that that uh holes and that's going through that's going in my lungs and going in, in my right side yeah that's me so they had me on a on a plug that was supposed to be feeding me blood going into my right side And I was and I pretty much laid there for a month. I've been getting <laughs> I, my phone is ringing, so let me see. I have a I have a headset on, which re reminds me that I should take it off. But um, occasionally or lately, I've been getting these calls, and I should record whenever it comes on, but I kind of give them a hard time. But um, Another side of things that have occurred with my mother and myself is that uh, she was uh, exposed to scammers. So um, for it was quite a long time, actually. So I have kind of like a I'm on a mission on some level to be able to expose though that industry as well. Um, there's been I mean, long story short is you know, we figured out who it was or who was doing what it, what they were doing, stopped it, protected, uh, put everything on lockdown. Um, so all of that is in order. But now when I get those kind of things now, I'm always cognizant of what happened to my mother. And the thing that's occurring now. So lately, there have been people who they give you a call and then they say, we're going to uh play a pre-recorded message and it'll be one of those pre-recorded messages that you are that you probably have heard before like for example the sheriff's association you know where they ask you to um san joaquin valley transparency that's that's who it is yes that's who that's who um that is who awb told me that he got a shout out and from the work that he was doing and his channel kind of blew up he said he used the term blew up so it probably went from wherever it was to like eight thousand, and then he grew it from there and he's now at fifteen thousand. so but what i was saying was that uh now what they're doing is they're playing a pre-recorded message which will have you think that they are representing that entity which you may have heard before and then someone will come and connect you and try to collect money from you. That's one thing. The other thing is I've had a number of ones that where you give your greeting, then they ask you a question that's probably a yes or no answer. And what I think they are trying to do is to get your voice saying yay or nay or those kind of things. I mean, it's, They've really gotten to the point where it's become um, quite elaborate. And I will I will disclose, I mean, full disclosure, if you will. I worked in, uh, I did customer service on the phones. I did collections uh, and I did sales. 
uh, and collections, um, you do a number of different things. When you think about it, there are not many people that want to talk to a collector. So your greeting and how you answered the phone, how you address someone when they got on the line was designed so that you could get them to continue the conversation versus just immediately hanging up, right? Uh, and I happen to be one of those people that during a time of my life, I had, I was in collections as well. So I feel like I was actually very effective because I remembered what it was like to be in collections. And so I treated an individual with respect and the way that I wanted to be treated. And so that's how I kind of conducted myself. And I, I actually it turned out to be pretty successful. From there, I kind of parlayed it into a career, if you will, into uh, training. I went to the training department, the company where I actually became the director for a call center. I was the trainer. Uh, and then I became the director of the training department. And then I applied to be a director of a call center starting from ground level up. Uh, and then that's how I got to North Carolina. We severed our relationship. And from there, I basically went to <laughs> doing a show and also doing eBay. My wife and I run an eBay business. So it's kind of like the progression of how I went to. So um so what why is it that i that i bring up awb in the, in this situation first of all um prior to this um uh, just yesterday actually i received a call from a friend and i hadn't talked to that person for a long time uh and he mentioned that he had a heart attack and we're about the same age he's a little bit older than i am but he's a healthy guy um, you know, not overweight or anything like that, no diabetes, you know, none of those things that will kind of make you think that, you know, she's just a, wa a heart attack waiting to happen. But he has a heart attack uh, and uh, he gets, you know, kind of fixed up. But it was so sudden and he always and he's talked to me before about um, his wife who has some health issues. And he's always talking about how, you know, he hopes that uh, you know, he goes first because then he will have because he, he doesn't know if uh, you know he would be able to handle it. I mean, he, he he was he's talking about setting things up so that his wife will be in the best scenario possible, but he always talks about it as if it's in the future, which obviously if it's not happening right now, it is the future. But my my point is is that for all of us, you know, life is so fleeting and, and elusive. And, and tomorrow is not promised to us. My mother always said to us, tomorrow is not promised to us. And she would always have my sister do things so that if she was gone, that we would be able to take care of ourselves, that if anybody else, we had to live with somebody, that we would be a burden to them. You know, we did, did our chores correctly and we were well-mannered and all those kind of things. And it was because she, the first thing that she let us know was that tomorrow is not promised to us. And... And so, likewise, similarly with, with AWB, he's in another country. Um, he's in a coma, and his girlfriend, you know, and it's interesting, you'll see my comment. I mentioned, um, I, one of my comments, I think, says, let me see if I can pull it up. It says, tell that girl you love her, because she interrupts what he's doing, and she says, I love you. I love you. And I think he may have muted or he didn't say it or whatever. And she kept saying, it. and I jokingly said, you don't tell that girl you love her, but he claims and he, he acknowledges that she's responsible for letting his family know that he had been in an accident. He was in the hospital and he was, you know, incapacitated in a coma, uh, kind of took care of his affairs for him. Now, thank God he made it through that ordeal and he, he was, he's able to have this show and, and tell us about it. But the reality of it is, and then what my mind thought thought process came to be about was that, you know, what if it wasn't that way? And what does he have in place? And I'm sure he's probably going to likely think about these kind of things that he needs to have some kind of directives in case there's nobody to speak for him. Because particularly if you're in another country, good God, can you imagine? And think about this too. And he mentions this too in his in, a, in the video. He indicates that there was like a 50-50% or they were saying there was like a 50-50% chance of him not making it through. Um, and 
you know, you have a healthy guy in the hospital. You know, we all know about the donating donation lists and all those kind of things. And if there's nobody to speak up for you, God knows what's going to happen thereafter. Um, and, you know, I just recently got married. The same, what did the uh, say? My aunt was in the collection of these for years and hated it. She said it was such a negative atmosphere. You know, I, I, I actually agree with you. Oops, sorry. There is there is a lot of negativity that goes along with uh, with collections. Uh, well, first of all, like I said, nobody wants wants to talk to a collector. So, for the collector, I mean, you hear tons of no's all day long. If if you're not if you don't do it correctly, I mean, normally if you say, "Can I speak with uh, Can I speak with Jimmy or Can I speak with Cliff?" If a person is in collections and they suspect that they might be talking to a collector, they're likely going to tell you that that person is not there. Or you have the wrong number, whatever. But if you answer the phone or when they answer the phone, you say Cliff. A lot of times when they hear their name, they say yes. They might say who's speaking. Which, you know, that's that's another answer. But the bottom line is if you get them to acknowledge that it is them. Then you can move on from there. That's kind of like one of the first openings. You say, Cliff, they say, yes. You say, hey, this is Craig from blah, 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 blah. Then you have your in. And normally all I would have wanted to say now, I've been trying to contact you for the last however long, and I know it's very possible that you might not be able or willing to take care of anything right this second. But I'm interested in having a conversation about uh, arrangements that we can make for, with, say, within the next month or so. What do you think? How does that sound? Then I can move into a, a relationship that will allow me to go ahead and do what I what I did. And again, my approach to it was understanding how I felt when I would talk to somebody that would try to put me down and tell me it's been seven months and blah, 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 blah. And like, hey, by the way, I told you from the very beginning, I don't have any money. <laughs> That's why I'm in the situation now in collections, because if I had the money, then you would have already gotten paid. <laughs> So, but yeah, I think if you make it negative, it can be negative. And of course, there are tons of laws out there, Cliff, now where the types of behaviors that we've probably seen in our lifetimes simply don't happen any longer. Not like that. And in fact, this and this occurred in Utah. There was a time where they had what they call pre predatory lenders. I work for... So I work for two entities that I would say are on the bad side of the spectrum of collections. One was a credit card company that had, um, I guess you call it subprime lending. That's what it's called, subprime lending. So they would be lending to individuals who had bad credit. And the interest rates were terrible. Um, they allow people to, to make all these purchases and, and accumulate all this debt. And then they put them in, they'd be in collections. And then they, that was just an industry. I'm pretty sure the company that I work for, if I remember correctly, is either Sue doesn't exist or something like that because, and, and some of the things that they did, this company did were less than honorable. Let's put it that way. Then the other thing, other company that I work for, I worked for a law firm. And they would purchase really old debt. And then they would call people and collect on this really old debt. I mean, we're talking the statute of limited, limitations had passed for so long. It's surprising that anybody ever made any arrangements. But they set it up in a way that was kind of cool and kind of interesting. They'd get the person on the line and say, let me... Let me get the attorney on the line or whatever. Get your file from the attorney. And then they act like, you know, feign that they were talking to the attorney and it was in some process. And then they collect. And once you get a payment, then, you know, I kind of you kind of restart the process. And that's how they did. And I hated that job. It was very negative. The, the atmosphere was negative. And they were always trying to make you, you know, make calls and and get collection and get funds. And I. I mean, I'll be honest with you. 
I get some of my own line. I'm just like, uh, yeah, you know, you're right. It's it's been nine years. I don't even really know why we call you. <laughs> so they got rid of me pretty quickly. But my mind went along the lines from hearing my friend yesterday, all of a sudden waking up and hearing him on the on the on on a live talking about uh, being in a coma and someone having to contact this information. And then me just recently uh, having gotten married uh, and my wife, we, we talk about these things as well. Um, talking out and, and I have an aunt who recently passed her son, her youngest son is taking care of her affairs. And so interestingly enough, you know, he, I don't know if, if his mother hadn't thought about it or if, uh, he hadn't thought about it, but didn't have all of the arrangements in place to be able, for example, to take care of her affairs fully. Um, now he's able to, but he's waiting on the on the death certificate, for example, um, so that he can accomplish other things. And it's just like if you don't have these things in order, then it just becomes so difficult for the family, for your family. So. I think that's kind of what was in my mind when I say, will you be ready? Is that uh, you probably should have something that allows your loved ones to be able to know what it is that you want and how to take care of your affairs. And basically all of these kind of things kind of like came to me as this, this occurred. And thank God, you know, AWB is, is okay. Uh, getting better recovering. Um, as far as his channel goes, I'm sure he'll, he'll weather that storm. Um, I'd be interested to figure out exactly how things shake out on that regards as well. Um, but if you have the ability to, um, even if it's just, just, you know, give him some support, then I would say Cliff has put the links in the, in the line, go to his channel and, and see if you can help. I'm certainly going to do something on my end. So let's see, what does this say? Restart the seven year clock with one payment. Yes. Seven year clock with one payment. It's I don't remember exactly. So are you are you saying seven years being like the statute of limitations? Yeah, that seems about right. Now in this video, interestingly enough, talking about um you know having things in order, he highlights a video where an individual uh a story, an individual calls nine one one. He's in his car, and it, it's so interesting. When I first heard it, the first thing that came to my mind was, why would he tell them that? And what he did was he told them that he had, I think he said, I have a firearm and I have knives. Uh, the dispatcher relays to whoever she's relaying information that the, that the person indicates that they have these things. And I thought the same thing, and... and uh, James thought said the same thing. Why would you say that? Even if you did have that, I don't think it's the most wise thing to let to tell a dispatcher that you have gun and knife, whether you're going to use them or not. Got you. Credit report. Uh, he puts uh, this, and it's been so long. Oh my gosh, it has been so long that I did that type of work. I, it's funny because my my oldest daughter, so she, bless her heart, she she's born my first grandson. Um, um, yeah, I'm proud of her, all those kind of things. But when she was in high school, she decided that she was going to. This is prior to her living with me because she graduated with me, so she lived like the last two years of her um, high school career with me, but. She decided she was going to go off with her boyfriend at the time to Arizona. I think it was Arizona. So it's so funny because her mom calls me and her mom's sister calls me and tells me kind of like the story, what's going on. And she has, she's monitoring like uh, my daughter would uh, put gas in the car with a credit card that her mom had, mom had given her. So she was monitoring that and she could tell the progression of where she was. So she wasn't too, too worried, but she was worried enough that she let me know what was going on. And 
she didn't really exactly know where the where she was going or who exactly she was with she kind of knew this person but she wasn't certain so she gave me like a list of names or numbers and maybe dates or something like that for me to skip trace it's called skip tracing when you look for an individual who doesn't want to be found um you know for collection purpose for example because that's what i was doing and so i found these names and i made some calls and i you know kind of in my fatherly threatening voice i need to know where my daughter is kind of thing uh and i did what i needed to do but that's one of the skills that I learned in collections, but uh, but I forget about the statute of limitations. I kind of remember about the fair credit, the fair debt credit uh, reporting act, and those kind of things. Um, I just remember, like, kind of what Cliff said is that it is a kind of a cutthroat uh, industry. And now, full swing, full circle, coming around to the scammers that are out there trying to get all the information is are doing what they need to do. So. But this story, and I don't remember if he got to the end of it because I was doing some other things, but um, another fascinating set of circumstances where the person calls 911 and ends up no longer with us. Why? <laughs> In some states, there are laws where they say you have to let them know about weapons. Well, yeah, like, I mean... Do you mean the dispatcher or the officer? Because to me, it's there are two different set of circumstances. If you are the individual calling someone, and they, I guess they ask you the question. If I, so I, 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 I see what you're saying. Uh, okay, so if you call nine one one, and the dispatcher asks you if you have weapons. I guess I understand that the answer to that question would be what it is. Yes, I have a I have a gun and I have knives. Okay, that's fair enough. But so what? But what does the officer then need to do with that information? Why would the officer put themselves so close to the potential for danger, if you will, that they feel they need to they need to protect themselves? When they already knew that the person had a, that you know weapons, I mean, there could be a hundred different ways. I mean, maybe at least at least two or three different ways where they could stop the individual, you know, surround them if you will, and make sure no one else is harmed. I just, I, I, what is that law? What is that law for? What is the purpose of the the law stating that you need to let the that the um let the officer know that you have a weapon by the way i worked in the lab for you know some 14 years and we had what was called universal precautions universal precautions dictated that every sample that we touched we treated it as if it was had was potentially infectious to us so why is it that all officers don't assume first that you have a weapon and then act accordingly. Why is it that they have to be quote unquote like shocked that the person had a weapon and then they, you know, they, they protected themselves. I think if, if I, I swear I've heard the, the statement that an armed society is a polite society. Yeah, I agree. Cliff, basically I'm saying what, what you're saying. I mean, you don't have to let them know anything. I mean, they can find out the way that they need to. Now, I think people probably tell officers that they're armed or that they have a concealed weapons um, license, all those things, to dispel the notion that they have any intent of harming them or to let them know that I'm holding my hands up so that you can see that I'm not going for that weapon. Or if you happen to determine that, I am an individual that you looked up and it shows that I have a concealed weapon. And now you're going to consider me dangerous. All of those things under the guise of making sure that you are now safe. When at the end of the day, it seems like it's absolutely actually turning out to be the exact opposite. It is what happens because they know that you're armed or that you could be armed. You are now dangerous. And so you end up, you know, no longer with us.
yeah, so good to see AWB. I'm glad he's doing okay. I'm sure he's going to have more content. And thanks, uh, Cliff, for putting that information out. I was I was around when you had your last show, I think. I can't remember what it was, but I remember thinking that I had to circle around because I couldn't listen to it at the time. Um, so, yeah, check out the uh, Vigilance Committee, Mr. Cliff Williams and uh, Nikki. So I I don't know when I heard this recently, but some people are who started uh, Mr. Nikki. You got to tell me who started that because I think it's funny whenever I hear people say Mr. Nikki. <laughs> where is it? where is that coming from? And look at that handsome man there. I had the privilege of uh, meeting Cliff in person. Um, it was a good. Uh, good time of fellowship that we had over some ice cream i believe is what it was we had and i'm looking forward to doing it again so look at what happened to chase allen oh okay chase allen uh that's nikki's husband oh i see okay <laughs> so so mr nikki is nikki's husband okay all right i thought oh i get that's annoying Take that off. I I don't know why I thought that. I thought that they were calling you Mr. Nikki. <laughs> That's funny. They knew he had concealed weapons from it. Okay, so so is this first of all, tell me. Uh, what did I have? Where did I have it up at? I think that you had someone on. I'm gonna say he was uh, like uh Hispanic sounding, a guy who's covering something that occurred. I thought it was maybe Kaysville or something like that, but Farmington sounds right. But he was uh, in his vehicle and he, they were, they approached him uh, and maybe they had multiple interactions with this individual and then all of a sudden just randomly they just start shooting. A week after 25-year-old Chase Allen was shot and killed by Farmington police, the department has released body camera video of the incident. Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold was at a news conference today where police chief Eric Johnson explained step by step what police body cameras recorded. Chris joins us live from Farmington City Hall. Chris. Well, good evening, Bob and Kelly. Yeah, Chief Eric Johnson shared a compilation of footage from the body cameras worn by the five officers that responded to that scene at the post office last Wednesday, as well as the initial officer's dash camera from his patrol vehicle. Now, in that footage, the chief says it details what started as just a routine traffic stop, but ultimately escalated after Allen failed to cooperate with police. Now, I do want to warn you, the video we are about to show you is graphic. You don't step out of the car. We're gonna break the window and pull you out. Step out of the car. Gun, 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 gun. Pull you out. Step out of the car. Gun, 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 gun. Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! Wow, how many shots did they take? Good God. Yeah. So I, I and that. So it was a. Uh... It was a Utah cop watch. I saw, I think it was you interviewing that individual about this particular story. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there should be plenty of footage on this case. There's one, two, three. You said about six cops, so it should be. Uh, has. I don't know, where's the investigation on this particular um, case? This video, how old is this video right here? Let's see. Well, so that was uh, the, those were the thoughts that, uh, can, I mean, this person's gone unexpectedly to boot. Um, God knows, you know, where, what he, he had going on for his family, his wishes, those kind of things. I mean, my point is, in, in everything, I, I'm reminded and hopefully you all are reminded that, again, tomorrow is not promised to us. I said it a number of times before, um, particularly if you if you're going to be an individual. Yes. And Utah Defender. OK, uh, if you're going to be an individual, you should consider the types of things that you need to do to, to put yourself 
to in the position to be able to make sure that your family can take care of your affairs. Uh, and that's not even if you're doing anything like, you know, auditing or anything like that. I mean, God forbid that you that you do anything that causes anything to be anything other than de-escalated. I think that uh, all of us, even if the cops aren't doing it, we should always probably try to uh, be on the side of de-escalation. But, you know, sometimes your emotions, your emotions do get there. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, I, w I was interested in th something that Foshin had done, a video that he had put out there because it happened to be about the the Social Security Administration. He now has a case over it. Uh, I think it's he and Rogue. And I had reached out to him and I sent him some information because the same type of thing happened to me. Uh, in fact, I submitted a FOIA request asking them to tell me what were the, the authorized signs that the Social Security Administration uses. And the reason why I asked that question is because I saw in his video that there were multiple signage and they basically said multiple and different things. And the reason why I tell the story is because um, Foshin mentioned that that he wished that he had the information as I outlined it because he would have used it in his brief. Now, I, I try to be humble about some things, and I, I, I take it as a compliment that he would think that that's something that I wrote about those in, that instances or that information that he would think that he would be able to use it. And I hope he does, you know, actually, I hope he is able to use it sometime in the future. But I'm still fascinated with the... Social Security Administration, they put you through a whole lot of hoops. In fact, I have to basically start the process over because they changed their system. And now we I can't find the record of me having submitted my FOIA request. So corruption is everywhere. Cliff, I agree with you. Do you think, I'm going to ask you the question since you put that statement out there. Do you think that government or people in government or corruption that exists, do you think it is inherently corrupt or do you think it becomes corrupt? You understand my question, I guess, is first. Is corruption, are people, entities, governments, businesses, those kind of things, are they inherently corrupt or do they become corrupt? And when I say become corrupt, I would think of a, a motivating factor such as money, greed, power, those kind of things as causing people to become corrupt. But I wonder, I guess, is it that they are corrupt from the beginning or do they become corrupt? Now, I have a friend who who played uh, professionally football specifically. I asked him about uh, Hernandez, you know, the, the patriot who who killed an, another individual got hemmed up for it, um, convicted of it, I guess, or maybe he wasn't even convicted of it yet. Um, maybe he was going to trial over it, and then he killed himself. But I asked him, I'm like, dude, you get all this money. Why would you put having a career that is established and having all that money, why would you put all that in jeopardy for the sake of you know hanging out and being all gangster and everything and doing all those kind of things? And he was like, Craig, he was already that way prior to getting all that money and getting all that money and having the people that would kowtow towards him because of all that money just makes it worse. So it's not like just all of a sudden, you know, he just became this way. So Cliff says it's inherent in people to become corrupt. Now, that's interesting. Hmm. Now, so I think I might say, okay, it's inherent in people to become corrupt. So do you then disagree or do you do you think that people don't naturally want to do good? Like I feel like I feel like if I see a scenario playing out that my desire in that scenario if I have to become involved is for it to be good, not bad. Now that might be the the two notions might be different. Uh, than what I'm actually talking about, which is becoming corrupt, which is what you're saying. That's along the lines of saying that people are naturally evil, I guess. Let's see. The definition of corruption. 
is for monetary gain and abuse of power for money. Is the pursuit of more money then, again, inherently corrupt or corrupt, uh, co conducive to corruption? See, now this, it's fascinating now to have this conversation in my mind of what we're talking about. I mean, if we just, if we're just talking about just natural resources, not taking, taking money out of, I mean, we can, we're talking about a resource, so, so money is a resource. But if we're talking about like just natural resources, we don't necessarily take only what we need. Unless the culture dictates it, like, you know, like uh, Native Americans, for example, I think that the notion would be understood that they typically use the land for what it can give and not more than that. But see, I think the thing is, like, let's say, say you have uh, a European or whoever came to the land, then once you determine that that resource could then be was valuable to someone else then m money comes into play or some way of trading comes into play and then people want more of that but i don't think necessarily in the very beginning they were think i'm just going to take so much more than i need unless i'm going to store some the temptation is a huge motivation when you have power and think you can get away with it. Sure, that I mean, that makes sense. But I think you understand where I'm coming from, at least in my, my thought process is that, like if you have a resource, let's just say, I mean, I'm just trying to think of, you know, trees, wood, you know, for burning. Like you gather as much wood as you need and maybe store up some, even if you're talking about for a village, you store up those, that wood. Now. Beyond that, if you figure out that someone else would purchase that wood and then you can still use the wood, but then, per, you know, purchase it or sell it, then the potential comes for the greed portion where you say, OK, now I just want to just clear out this stuff and I'm going to sell the rest that I don't use. So now another resource comes into play because of the first resource. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm thinking about it in a weird kind of different way. But anyway, once again, Mr. Cliff, you bring up something that I think is fascinating. So uh, you said 6 p.m. Central. Well, it was just you and me today um, and whoever else dropped by. I think one other person dropped by. I appreciate you duking it out with me. And I do like to say, and I think this is a kind of the representation of how I feel about things that... And, and even more so now that we are about to go into an election season, that whether you be uh, on the right side or the left side, as far as I'm concerned, I just hope that we are able to meet somewhere here in the middle, uh, because I think the further that you get away from each other with regards to your ideas, your thoughts, your policies, politics, those kind of things, you continue in a direction that will allow you to never come to a place of agree agreement. So that's why I try to be that guy that meets you somewhere halfway in the middle. So my name is Craig. I am Fact the Madness. I appreciate you sharing this hour with me. Uh, we endeavor to make it a little bit longer when we can. But for now, this will just have to do. All of you take care and thanks for showing. And we'll see you on the next show. Peace. Thank you for watching. If you have a video you'd like for us to cover, use the submit link in the description or pinned comment. If you enjoyed this one, consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Be sure to check out all of the other content we have for your edutainment. We will continue to respectfully exercise our First Amendment rights and publish the interactions we have with government officials. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment. It's the easiest way for you to let us know your thoughts about our channel. I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and it'll be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. 
I'm losing it, the noose it fits, I'm losing shit, a stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose your gift, oh